To objectively evaluate a classifier, we'll need to test it on a lot of data. We do this by splitting the data in two, a training set and a testing set. We classify all testing samples according to their nearest neighbors in the training set. But we know the correct labels for these already, so we can count how many classifications are correct and compute the accuracy. To follow along, make sure you have the code from last time, or get my version from GitHub. And let's settle the score between these two. Get it? Because we're making a scoring system. No, no, no! Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu. Coding with Radu. Let's code now. We'll split the data in feature extractor JS before we start writing files. I'm going to log here that we will be generating splits. It's going to be a fast process. It's more like a comment for us to know what happens. And here, let's decide a training amount. And I will set that to be 50% of the number of samples. And I will define an empty array for training and an empty array for testing. We loop through all the samples like this. And if we are less than the training amount, we add to the training. So the first half of the samples will be the training set and the second half will be the testing set. Now we're going to be writing these into files as well, same as what we did here with the features, both in the JSON file and the JavaScript object. Let's paste this here and rename for training. The samples here need to be the training array and then training JS. Let's say this object will be called training. And here I'm going to still refer to this attribute as samples, but set the value of training. And let's copy this again for testing. I need to be really careful here because it's very common to make the mistake where you're testing on the training data or something like that. So let's rename this to testing and this here to testing. This will be testing JS. This will be testing and this is testing. Now we need to define all of these constants. So in common constants, I will copy this features line and right here, training, training, JSON, testing, testing, JSON. And this features JS here at the bottom, I also duplicate it with training JS, the training JavaScript object and then testing JS, testing JavaScript file. Let's save this. And in our terminal, we can type node feature extractor to get now this new data in our data set, we can find training JSON and testing JSON. They both have the same format, but the data is different. Let's load next these JavaScript objects for testing and training into our web application. I'm going up here and we'll copy this features JS two times, once for training and once for testing. And below here, we can take out those samples 
like so from the training and from the testing. The files have also the feature names, but we have those already here. Now, when we're testing, we pretend that we don't know the label. The labels are here, we just forget about them. So I'm going to loop through all of the test samples. And I'm going to store the value of the label in an attribute called truth and replace the label with question mark. I'm storing the truth here because we'll need it when we calculate the accuracy. You'll see. But now let's divide this code into two, where we handle the training samples and testing samples separately. I'm going to group this and copy it below. And write here that these are going to be the training groups coming from grouping the training samples. Let's copy this training groups here instead of groups and here instead of groups. Now the same thing happens below, but with the testing groups coming from the testing samples. And let's copy here testing groups, testing groups. Now if we scroll down in the chart, I want to visualize just the training data, the training samples. And in the classification, we need to be very careful here. We classify using only information from the training data. So training samples, and also here, this one training samples. Let's save this and open the page. You can see the data looks different. It looks like Herminio's house is not part of the training data. It's still here, but we don't know the label for it. This is the case now for all testing samples in the second half of the page. This is the borderline between the sets. Now, before continuing, we need to talk about normalization one more time. You see these numbers here, they are coming because we normalized the whole data. And that's not proper. We have no idea what the testing set will be. So we should normalize only with the training data. In feature extractor, we go here where normalizing happens and we replace this with training. Then I'm going to copy this and normalize the testing using here the min max from the training. This is proper, but it won't work unless we move this code below here where training and testing exist. Let's save this and in our terminal, I will regenerate the features, refresh the page, and now we have this 0, 1 here as expected. I won't be using this input so much anymore, so I'm going to disable it by default. In viewer HTML under the sketchpad, we will say toggle input. So now if I save and refresh the page, it's off. And if we look for Herminio here and click on his house, something weird happens. I think we have an error and it wants to display it on this chart with an image for that label, which we don't have. So let's go to utils in common. And I can't write here an attribute with the question mark, but I can using this other syntax. So I will. We'll have a red question mark emoji here. Now let's refresh, click on the house again. And there's no error, but where is the house on the chart? It's actually where it should be. I'm going to zoom out and it's there. 
normalizing doesn't guarantee that your result will be in the 0-1 range. But most of the time it is there, especially if you have a large training set. Like if I'm gonna click on any of the others here, it's probably gonna be there. Next what we'll do is classify all these unknown points at once. I'm gonna go to viewer HTML and all the way at the top here, where we don't know the label, we try to find it out using our classify function. We classify the test sample point. I'm destructuring here because the nearest samples also come with it. And then I'm going to set the test label to whatever comes from there. And I'm also going to set here an attribute for correct, which comes after comparing this label with the truth value from earlier. This will be useful when displaying the items. I want to use a different color. Let's go to JS, display JS, up in this create row function. When we destructure here properties of the sample, let's add this correct attribute as well. And here where we are creating our sample container, I'm going to check if it's correct. And if it is, I'm going to style its background. So it's light green. Let's save this, refresh, and look at this. Presumably this is where our test set starts. Can't be sure because this could also be part of the test set with all of them wrong, but I remember it was this one. To be sure, we should add a subtitle here. Let's go to viewer HTML between these two pieces of code. I'm going to write subtitle creating an H2 tag with an inner HTML of testing. I will add this to the container as well. Let's save this, refresh, and now it's clear where it starts. Now if we click on some of these, they don't turn yellow anymore if they are these green ones. So we can fix that by going to style CSS inside of this emphasize we can add here an important, like this. This will make it appear even on top of this green color. Now, I'm not going to count how many of these things are green. Instead, I'm going to calculate an accuracy. We'll go to viewer HTML and in the control panel, after this toggle input button, let's have a statistics field. I'll just use a div for that. And in it, we'll put some numbers that we calculate here. I'm going to count how many times we are correct and how many times we have in total. And here, I will just update the total count by one at each time and our correct count will grow depending on this correct value. If it is correct, it grows by one, otherwise it doesn't grow. Then below this, I'm going to put inside of the statistics div an inner HTML, starting with a bold accuracy, and then a new line where we are going to concatenate the correct count slash the total count, and I'm also going to put in parentheses the percentage. We have a function for that in utils already. Like so. Let's save this, refresh, and here is our number. It could be bigger even on my small testing page here. Let's go to style CSS at the bottom and add the field for these statistics. Increasing the size and adding some padding. Okay, so 39.62, that's our accuracy. When we 
use our k nearest neighbor classifier where the 10 nearest neighbors are considered. But this is really a parameter. And now we can compare if we extract it as k and move it up here at the top and set it to 1. Let's see what the accuracy was without using multiple neighbors. It was actually much worse. So considering multiple neighbors was indeed a good idea. Now we can say for sure. Let's try some other value, maybe 50. Wow, we got 43.6, almost 50% with just these two basic features. Let's see how this input spider looks now with 50 lines here. Ooh, creepy. We can see it better if we change the color to black for those lines. In chart JS, let's set here CTX stroke style. I think gray is enough. I don't know why I like this so much. Did you follow along? Great. Please like this video if you learned something today and share it with others so they can learn as well. And if you got stuck somewhere, ask and we'll figure it out. You can also take my version from GitHub and compare. This accuracy is not amazing. But we're on the right track. It's much better than guessing. Or is it? What is the probability to guess correctly? Can you figure it out? Try also implementing a classifier that just guesses and empirically test to see if you were right. Also, there's a lot of duplicated code in Feature Extractor JS and Viewer HTML. Can you find a better structure for it? Share it with me. I'll choose my favorite and refactor the code in that way. Next time, I'll teach you about decision boundaries.